Okay, hello everyone. Uh, it's a real pleasure to, to be here. Uh, thank you, uh, Ben to Cafe, for inviting us to this virtual space. Thank you, all of you, for being here. Uh, my name is Carlos Quiroga. I am an entrepreneur by nature. I'm passionate about technology and programming. I'm also the CEO of Globalis, a software company based in Argentina that held different type of companies and startups with innovative end-to-end -end services. Um, a few years ago, we started to help entrepreneurs and a small companies who wanted to build their minimum viable products. And along this journey, we have gained a lot of experience which has enabled us to work on any uh, design or development stages. So we are constantly streamlining MVP processes, speeding up their development, uh, making them much more efficient. Um, in our experience, uh, when a product is taking shape, entrepreneurs have a lot of concern about the development process. Overall, the right scope to achieve an MVP quickly and with the least possible investment. So we really like working together with our customers and helping them to achieve their goals, which in turn end up begging our goals too. So to do that, we use agile methodologies to deal with any issue that may arise in the development process. Also, we accelerate it with SaaS services that can leverage your product and allow you to focus on your core business. Um, for example, uh, authentication services like Out Zero, communication libraries like SendGrid to send messages, email, SMS or WhatsApp as, as well. We also help uh, to develop proof of concept software when there is some technical aspect uh, of the product that needs to be verified since the rest of the your business idea depend on that part. Um, so to move on in our story, first, I would like to share with you a short video uh, to tell you uh, what MVP concept is about and then give way to Ricardo Rodriguez, a customer and also a partner who will tell you about his own experience developing MVP uh, software with us. If you're an entrepreneur or startup and you have a new digital product in mind, surely you'd be advised with an MVP. But what is MVP? Let's meet Katie. Katie has an idea for an app and a website, so she ends up contacting a software company to develop it. They recommend her to build an MVP and then improve it but Katie doesn't know what minimum viable product is. MVP is a product with just enough features for early adopters to use and that, so they can provide feedback for future development. So why does she need one? With an MVP, she can save money by investing in successful projects. She can verify actual interest from potential customers. And finally, it can help decide what methods can be used to give an idea for costs and pricing. Katie is thinking strategically. She wants to focus energy and money on what creates value for customers. Her goal is not perfection. Her goal is to produce a great first offering that enables learning. Once she has launched her app and website, she can gather feedback, implement changes, and create more value for customers, faster than competitors. Now Katie has an effective MVP, which will turn into a successful business. She has learned it is important to put customers front and center and think about it as people having an experience. In the process of building it, they will have many loops, such as finding problems, brainstorming solutions, prototyping, testing, getting feedback, and making changes. It is important to be flexible and adaptable throughout this whole process. Katie did an investment in managing risk and producing a better and quality product. She saved a lot of money throughout this. She also saved a lot of effort. And finally, she saved time. Most importantly of all though, she went to the market quickly. Today, She's working on scaling her app. Do it simple and easy. Build an MVP. Ricardo, could you take the, the screen and share your presentation, please? Thank you, everyone. Uh, basically, I'm here today in order to share some of our experience working with uh, Globalism. 
Ricardo Rodriguez. I'm currently a C, uh, Chief IT Officer for a financial services company in the Boston area. But today we're going to talk more about what has been our experience with um, Globalis in the development of our application, Yala Collect. It's actually a new venture we started in the um, Dubai marketplace. And uh, basically, we can tell that coming from the multiverse, where you actually find all a lot of development and a lot of people offering development services, Globalis, uh, we came across, we stumbled upon this company in a regular business uh, uh, environment. And uh, I don't get into much details. All I can say is that the company itself left quite an impression that they were the first ones to come to mind when we were looking to develop an actual product with some uh, in a different track, different track of ideas, new technology, uh, different scalability. So we had an entire list, a different slew of uh, ideas that we needed to put together. And um, we started as every entrepreneur does. We started with our papers, we started with our ideas. And uh, personally, I'll try to share some of our my particular concerns and how did Globalis helped us in order to solve them. We were, first of all, different technologies we're trying, trying to involve. And the second one is that, as you, most of you know, being on the mature market of uh, established applications, sometimes you lose sight of what it means to be looking for a new technology or understanding the concept of having a pre-built software and technology. So coming from an idea to a result, it doesn't seem as simple. And uh, we were lucky enough that we had the foundation for that, but we, we still needed some guidance and some uh, support for that. So the MVP seemed the most uh, appropriate approach for our needs and uh, we did we did the research, we did all uh, the actual um, the, uh, study in order to come up with a lean canvas and understand what was our marketplace, what was our need. And then once we had this, we I literally called Carlos and say, we have this idea, how can you help us out with this? And the first part is we defined our MVP that we needed to start with and then as soon as we had that, then the, we were walked through the process. The first part of the process was we started mapping the story. And for this, we followed the Moscow approach. We had the Moscow approach means we had a must have, we had the should haves, we had the could haves and the won't haves. And this is basically using the technique uh, most Scrum projects are using and allowed us to identify how do we want to move forward to catalog and, ident and uh, identify how far into the process of development could we get into without going crazy about the amount of activities and things that we needed to work with. Um, the next part that we worked with was actually trying to put together the scope itself and prioritize. And for this, that was another part in which we got a lot of help from a global team, because at, at the end, we knew what we wanted, but we didn't really have that much structure in terms of uh, setting up all the different priorities for the marketplace. Uh, we didn't have a lot of the uh, but, uh, proper uh, foundation on some of the uh, existing frameworks, reusable technologies, and that actually came handy when we got those references from uh, from the process we follow with them. The next part of the process that we follow with uh, with the team was the design of the UX and that some of the UI. And this was another part where we found a substantial advantage on the method we follow with Globalis is that they provided us, in my prior experience, I had to deal with developers on one side and dealing with my, uh, designers on the other side. And it was this joint process. It was difficult. So I had to come up with the uh, files, share and take all this uh, time from people. In this case, we didn't. We actually had a platform already set up for us. We just worry about expressing our needs and the magic happened behind the scene. We didn't have to actually have to transfer the files. They did that internally and it saved us a ton of time to come up with the MVP part. Uh, after we prioritized, we did all the aspects of uh, getting the rest of the project into backlogs and creating categories to actually uh, be able to uh, follow up on that. 
and make sure that the stakeholders uh, would be able to know that they were taken care of, and uh, in that case, would be our investors and ourselves as a uh, product uh, product owners within the process. Um, with the Scrum, the methodology that we were in working with, we follow a really tight cycle of development, two weeks of sprints, uh, followed up by uh, the standard agile methodology uh, development. And uh, unfortunately, since the time is short, I can only mention that at the end of the day, following the MVP, we currently are at an established application in the marketplace for Dubai that folks also signed a contract with uh, one of the largest uh, institute bank institutions in the market there, uh, starting from a humble MVP and converting now into a full-fledged release application. So I get back to you, Carlos, uh, mostly oh, yeah. it comes yes. back to share about yes, the experience we had. So please feel free to ask anything. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Great explanation about the complete the whole process of Bill and MVP. Um, thank you for your time, all of you. Before we finish our presentation, um, if you have a digital product in mind, uh, you don't have how to start with this idea, or if you are about to begin the MVP building process, we offer you a one-on-one -on -one MVP mentoring. Uh, only click on the link that appears in the chat uh, with my calendar. Um, feel free to choose the date that is coming in for you, and we will be, we will be happy to help you. Thank you, Carlos and Ricardo. I just want to make sure I'm capturing that. Yeah. Um, this has been fantastic. Does anybody have any questions for um, Carlos or Ricardo as they about their product? What is the timeline for like the MVP kind of development? Like, how does that, I mean, you said, you know, minimal amount of time. What does that mean? <laughs> like days? That's, a, that's actually, uh, it's pretty interesting actually. The, the problem with uh, that is that no two projects are alike. It's like snowflakes. They, they are totally different from when you're looking closely. Uh, it depends. It depends on what the scope is. It depends what you're catering to. Like if you are trying to cater for investors, you probably want to be nailing down those features, but on a regular MVP basis, you could be talking about having something that is very uh, usable within a six, three to six months, maybe at least to have something that is coming out in the marketplace, at least for people to have a sense of what you're offering as what is going to be your value proposition. Yes, that's right. Yes. In our experience, this is a, uh, an, uh, and, and a correct time to to weigh something valuable and a great outcome to show investor or client, potential client or early adopter. Yes, that's right. Are there particular um, industries that you work best with or is it just kind of varied? Um, yeah, we, we work with different industries. Um, we have great experience with uh, oil and gas uh, industry to big companies, but we also have a great experience with entrepreneurs like the team of Ricardo that has an idea um, to services in this case. Uh, but we have also experience with retail and services and, and others. So it's it's very widely the, the, the different industry that we can work and we learn in, in each industry and with, with each an entrepreneur that had an idea. Thank you, I'll be reaching out. I, I'm actually from South America as well and I'm launching my second company uh, pertaining to soccer. So we, we should talk. Great, great. Needless to say, actually, you have my information. If you want to ask me more about these guys, I can definitely put a good word for them. Or if you want any, you have any questions about our own experience developing the, the product, more than glad to be of help as well. Amy, I think we should definitely introduce them to Annette at RyeHub. And I dropped the link to RyeHub here. So RyeHub is our neighbor in our building in Providence. And they are the state's first innovation campus. They focus on um, highly scalable, um, identified 
high potential scalable startups, um, getting them to scale quickly. So twofold, we'd love to have you, you know, operate out of Rhode Island as you scale your U.S. business, and we can help expedite right. that potentially. And um, I think that, you know, this is a great tool for our startup activity in Rhode Island. So we'll be happy to connect you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Tony. I, I will take a look uh, from the site. Thank you.